Welcome to this short introduction on Mathematica. Mathematica is a very powerful computer program that allows you to do mathematics to a level that's much greater than anything that you may have done on a graphing calculator. As such, uh, many industries and computer scientists, engineers, and other working mathematicians um, use Mathematica extensively because of the time saving it gives you in doing very rote computations. So in this introduction, what I want to do is take you through a couple of the features of the Mathematica environment and then individual lectures will provide additional syntax on how to do things. So this is just a short general introduction on using Mathematica. So what I've done here is I've gone to um, the Mathematica program icon and double clicked on it and uh, if you're in the Math Center or the PSME Center the staff can help you find the Mathematica program icon and I've started what's called a notebook. So in a notebook, one of the things you want to do is when you're running Mathematica, Mathematica actually is two programs running at once. There's what you see in front of you, which is called the notebook. And this is basically a word processing document that also has the ability to have um, mathematical computations done on it. But when you do this, you actually send some syntax, some stuff that you've typed, to another program, and it interprets it, does some mathematics on it, and then returns it. So I just want to give you some of the basic um, ways that Mathematica works. So what I like to do when I start Mathematica is I usually, um, to get the second program running that does the mathematical computations, I usually just start some simple computations like I type 2 plus 2. And then um, you have two options now. This is just um, typesetting, syntax. To actually evaluate this and get 4, I have to send this to the second program. So to send a, an input, to the second program, I need to press either the shift return button on the uh, on the keyboard or on the numeric keyboard, you can press the enter key. So it's either shift plus return or enter, one or the other. So in either case, press that. And what you'll see at the top of the screen, it'll say something like running. And then, so here's something that you'll see. So now you see that up here it says input one so this is the expression 1. Input means that this was input to the second program. That's called the kernel. And the kernel took that as input and interpreted it and then came back and, re and returned it as output of 4, interpreting 2 plus 2 as 4. Now you'll notice when you do Mathematica, to the right over here there's individual cells. I've highlighted the first cell and the second cell. When you type syntax, you want to make sure that everything you type goes in one cell only. Okay, that's very important. Okay. So let's do something simple here. We're going to define a simple function. Now, to start a new cell, what you want to do is click below the last cell that you were working on anywhere. You see the horizontal cursor here. Just click below it. You'll see a horizontal line. And that now tells me that I'm ready to start a new cell. So you always want to look for this horizontal line. And on the right here, you want to have each line of input and output in its own cell. Okay, so let's define a function. Now, syntax with Mathematica is very unforgiving. You have to type exactly what appears or else you'll get something that you don't want. So I'm going to define a simple function, f, notice I'm using a square bracket, x, you use an underscore, a right square bracket, a colon, and equals, and then whatever function you're going to define. So let's define a x cubed plus x plus uh, x cubed minus x plus 2. Okay, and then again, shift enter, shift return or enter. And you'll notice it says input 2. Now, I can compute values of the function now by... Now, the underscore in f of x only gets done once when you define it. After that, you don't... You just evaluate your function. So, one thing I can do is I can type f of 2 and press enter or shift return. And it gives me 8. That's the output. And I also can enter expressions in the function, like I can evaluate f of x plus, uh, maybe I'll do a symbolic constant, a, and press enter. And it simplifies that. So if you know about derivatives, you can type a derivative of the function. Just type f, and then the prime. That's just to the left of the return key. And then of x, and then you can press enter, and it will compute a derivative for you. If you don't know about derivatives, that's OK. Okay, so that's how you define a simple function in Mathematica. Again, notice each line of input here has its own cell. So input, cell, output, cell. You want to have one bracket for each line of input and output. 
Okay, so here's starting a new cell. All right, so that's how you define a function. Another thing you can do is you can plot functions. So maybe I want to plot this function. And if you're in the PSME Center, um, if you go to the tutor's desk, they can give you a, um, there's a small book in there on Mathematica that gives examples of syntax to do various common things. So you could get one of those from the Math Center if you want, but I'll show you how to do a plot. So you don't have to worry about learning all this syntax. It's in a book, and uh, in my labs I provide examples of how to use the syntax in the lab. So, so I'm going to plot this function from minus 2 to 2. Close parentheses. Press enter, and there you go. There's a graph of the function. So, so there it is. Um, if you want to adjust the um, the y range, you can do that. What you do is use the plot range command. And so um, maybe I want to graph this only from minus 1 to 1 on the y-axis. And there's all kinds of syntax you can use in Mathematica. So um, again, you shouldn't be trying to learn all the syntax I'm typing here. This is just to give you an idea of the feel for how the program works. Okay, another thing that's very useful in Mathematica is the symbols palette. So I'm going to bring that up and show you how to do that. So under the file menu, I'm using version 5. There are newer versions in the Math Center, so you might have to, you might have to hunt around for it on the, on the menus. But uh, what I'm looking for is palettes. And then under the palette, I want basic input palette. And you can see it just appeared here. It's over here now. I like to leave it off to the right like this. And the palette brings additional features, like if you want to evaluate an expression here with a power, I can type 2, hit the tab button, hit 3, and then enter. So I can enter expressions, fractions, roots. I can take nth roots. Um, if you know about integrals, you can do integrals. I can integrate from, I don't know, 0 to 3. Uh, maybe I'll enter x squared dx. So it'll evaluate um, definite integrals. Mathematica does all kinds of stuff. You'll notice over here on the palette, there's a symbol for pi. There's a symbol for e right next to it. There's an infinity symbol, and then more typesetting tools. So, so the basic input palette is a useful one to know about. That one's very handy. OK, um, let me show you how to do comments. So, All right, so if I go back to my file menu, so how do you enter a comment in Mathematica? Let's see here. Okay, there it is. It's under the format menu. And so what I want is I want down here I want cell dingbat. And you can pick any of these. Um, <clears throat> maybe I'll do a happy smiley. Now you won't see a comment until you start typing, but if I type something, um, here's how it would appear. Here is a comment. Um, one thing about comments, um, you don't want to press the shift return or the enter button. Uh, if you do that, you're going to be sending the other, the um, kernel stuff that's not mathematical syntax, and it's going to get confused. So, so when you do comments, if you want to do a return, if you hit the return key without the shift command, you can enter returns and then continue your comment and so on and so forth. Um, but what you don't want to do is hit the enter button or you don't want to hit shift and return. You don't want to actually send this to be processed or else you're going to get an error message. So that's how you do comments. So comments are nice to be able to do. Um, and then one other thing is if you want to access built-in functions, one thing I like to do once I start typing Mathematica is I, uh, you can use the edit menu and just copy and then start a new cell. Always remember to start a new cell and then uh, command or control V to paste and then you can uh, just change things so I use the copy and paste button a lot <clears throat> okay so how would you plot now Mathematica has a bunch of built-in functions but you have to know how these work when you access built-in functions you always have to capitalize the first letter so if I want to plot the sine function I have to do capital S I N square bracket X it's always square brackets and then here I'll graph from minus pi to pi. So on my symbol palette over here on the right, I've got minus pi. And then I'll enter pi again. And the plot range is good. So now I'm going to hit shift return or enter. 
And there you go, there's the graph of the sine function. Um, one thing that you can do with um, comments, some people like to make these highlighted, so if you click the cell containing the comment here, and see if I can find it here, yes, um, if you go down to background color and choose cell gray box, um, you can highlight your comments and that's kind of nice for um, readability. <clears throat> so there's a comment that's been highlighted, so that's kind of a nice feature. Um, okay, so we did comments, talked a little bit about the symbol palette, um, defining a function, graphing functions. Uh, again, you want to have each line of input here. Notice each line has its own cell over here on the right. That's important. The output, which is a graph, has its own cell. Clicking below the last cell to start a new cell. And then finally, the last thing I want to show you in this short introduction is when you go to the File menu and you save as, when you save a Mathematica document, let me just go ahead and do this. I'm just going to type this as temp. Now, if I close my file here, and then I come back, click on temp, take it out of memory. So there it is there. Now, watch what happens here when I evaluated my function f of 2. If I go to this line here where f of 2 was, and I hit return, watch what happens. Oh, okay, I still have my function defined. I have to turn off Mathematica for this to work. Okay, let me just quickly do that. So I'm quitting out of Mathematica. Starting Mathematica again. Go to my function that I had before. Hit Enter or Shift Return. Okay, it's already still... Okay, this, the second program is still... Alright, this isn't working. Let me see here. I have to shut down the second program for this to work. Okay, well, let me just give you the short of it. Okay, bottom line here, even though my computer here at home is not working for me. When you take a file in Mathematica and you close it, and then you open it again as a new session. This is especially true if you restart your computer or you come to the Math Center on the day after you did this and the computer's been shut down. When you define a function, um, the second program, the kernel, doesn't keep track of these functions. So what you have to do is, like up here under f of x, you'll notice that there's no more input here. The kernel won't know about this function, so if you type f of 2 without telling it what your function was, it's going to give you an error message. So... The last thing I want to say here in this introduction is, is that when you save a document and then you call it back up out of memory, as a first step before you do anything, go to each line of input where there's no input or output here. Like on my 2 plus 2, just position the cursor after each line and just press enter. And look for that input and output. Just do that for each line. And then continue your lab from where you left off after you've input every line again. This allows the second program, the kernel, to be reassociated with all the work that you did so far. If you try to evaluate a function that hasn't yet been defined because, because you came back to the math center and took the program out of memory like this and you go down here and you type f of 2, without telling it what your function is, you're going to get an error message. So, so as a first step, this is just a little thing to, to make your life easier in the math center. When you call a program out of memory, um, off of a disk, go through and just input every line, and then go to your lab and continue from there, and you'll be fine. Okay, well, that's it. It's a short introduction, but this is a basic introduction to Mathematica. As for all the syntax commands that are possible here, in my labs I give examples of the syntax you'll need for the labs. If you want more general information on Mathematica, go to the tutor's desk at the Math Center, and there's a small uh, booklet on syntax in Mathematica that you can borrow from the tutors there. The bookstore used to sell it. I think it was something like a short introduction to Mathematica. I don't know if they keep copies of that anymore, but that would be another thing that you could do or just go online. There's there's many, many, many books on using Mathematica, so you could also just purchase a book if you're curious. But uh, as, for, as for my labs, uh, speaking with respect to my labs, for my labs, um, all the syntax you'll need to know about, I will provide examples for you inside of the lab. Okay, that's it.
This ends the short introduction to Mathematica.